Today we're talking about chillers and water cooling tower basics. So what is a chiller? A chiller is a piece of equipment used in commercial and industrial applications to cool down processed liquid, usually water. A chiller removes unwanted heat. Uh, they're popular in commercial buildings for HVACR purposes. There are different types of chillers, for example, water-cooled, air-cooled, vapor compressor, vapor absorption, and screw chillers. The graphic on the right represents a water-cooled shell and tube chiller. You can see the copper tubes and you can see the shell. The main components of a chiller is your compressor, your condenser, your expansion valve, your evaporator, your tube sheet, that's basically the metal plate between your removable cover and the inside of the, the, the tube. It's like a divider plate. What is a water cooling tower? A water cooling tower is used in commercial and industrial applications to cool down process water from the chiller condenser. However, the cooling tower water is a separate circuit from the actual process liquid that needs to be cooled down. So the process liquid or the water inside the building never touches or mixes with the water cooling tower water. Uh, cooling tower water is also an open loop cooling circuit, meaning the water in the tower is exposed to atmosphere or daylight. Uh, they're popular in commercial buildings for HVAC purposes. There are different types of water cooling towers. There are three main types of cooling towers. They are defined by how water or air pass through them. They are cross flow, counter flow, and hyperbolic. There are also two varieties classified solely on airflow, known as induced draft and passive draft cooling towers. So the graphic on the right shows us the basic parts or components of a water cooling tower. You have your cooling fan on top. You have your spray nozzles, your fill media. It could be made out of PVC or stainless steel. And you have your optional drift uh, eliminator. These basically help reduce the amount of water vapor lost to the air exiting the top of the water cooling tower. Because obviously the more water that gets evaporated out of your cooling tower, the more fresh water makeup you have to add to the tower, which is going to increase your water bill. So if you can try to maximize your water cooling tower efficiency, that'll help keep your utility bills down. Now, water cooling towers have a, a float valve, but a float valve floats down, opens a valve, allows fresh water to enter the basin of a cooling tower to top off the water level. As the float floats up, it'll shut the valve and maintain that constant water level in your water cooling tower. Now, something important to note, if your spray nozzles are clogged or broken, or not properly adjusted, or if the spray pattern is too far apart, that's gonna cause inefficient heat transfer. Because as that warm water gets sprayed into the water cooling tower from the condenser in the building, it's gonna trickle down through the filter media, and that fan is gonna draw cooler ambient air up through the filter media, through those side vents, and ideally the ratio you want to see is about 70 to 75 percent air and 20 to 25 percent water. If that ratio is much more different than that, that's going to cause inefficiencies in your cooling. And again, you end up losing more water to atmosphere. So how does it work? Well, if we start here at the chiller, the chiller is usually in the basement of a building. 
Um, there is refrigerant inside the shell of both the condenser and the evaporator, and that refrigerant is circulated via the compressor, and the way it works, as the refrigerant is pumped through the condenser, the refrigerant then gives up its heat to the water that is flowing through the tubes. That refrigerant is then pumped through the expansion valve and into the evaporator. And inside the evaporator, once the refrigerant has been cooled down, because remember when refrigerant travels through an expansion valve, it's going to expand, but it's going to immediately reduce in pressure. Anytime you reduce refrigerant's pressure, you reduce its temperature. If you increase refrigerant's pressure, you increase the temperature. So you have that nice cold refrigerant inside the evaporator. And as the water from your air handling units or your fan coil units passes through the tubes inside that evaporator, that water is going to give off the heat it collected from the building, from all the office space, to the refrigerant. And then the water, after it gets chilled in there, is going to travel back out to your air handling unit or to your, your fan coil units to provide cooling for the building. And now that heat energy that was picked up uh, by the refrigerant in the evaporator shell will then travel into the condenser shell, whereby that heat energy will be transferred to the water that is being pumped through the condenser tubes and back up to the water cooling tower to give off its heat energy. So preventative maintenance for a water cooling tower and chiller. A water cooling tower needs a water treatment plan. A water treatment plan consists of the following items. Daily bench tests of water cooling tower water samples. So you're looking for an ideal pH of around 8. Uh, you want to have algicide like bromine added via a dosing pump controlled by a controller to eliminate uh, biological contaminants in the system. Uh, you want an inhibitor chemical added via a dosing pump controlled by a conductivity controller. And an inhibitor chemical is basically a chemical that is going to reduce scale inside the, the system, uh, reduce rust and corrosion buildup. Uh, we want to inspect and clean the conductivity probe annually. Uh, chemical feed tanks or drums must be double walled per the fire marshal. Uh, SDS sheets or MSDS sheets uh, and PPE are required. Uh, you also want to have an eyewash station, emergency shower nearby. Uh, you want to inspect the water cooling tower components and clean per manufacturer's instructions. So the manufacturer should be able to tell you how often things need to be cleaned, how often the water needs to be drained out and refilled with fresh water, uh, the fill media, how often that needs to be cleaned or replaced, etc. And you want to have spare parts on hand, for example, spray nozzles, belts, a spare motor for your cooling fan, uh, spare pumps, water pumps, uh, if you can afford it, a spare compressor, uh, fill media, etc. It'll be situation specific depending on your facility, your industry, and your budget. Now, chiller maintenance plan uh, consists of the following items. Heat transfer deteriorates as fouling gets worse. So by watching for an increase in pressure drops or decreases in equipment performance, you can spot fouling early and do something about it before you cause serious damage to your equipment. Uh, daily inspection, check for leaks, check safety devices, gauges, thermometer, etc. Service your Y strainers as needed because if those get plugged, 
Obviously, that's going to restrict your water flow, reduce your cooling, etc. Um, closed loop water sampling and testing weekly, uh, annual inspection and cleaning, so descaling of the tubes. There's different ways to descale the tubes. There's actual descaler chemical that you pump through the tubes. There's projectile devices. There's special brushes that kind of look like a really skinny bottle brush. Uh, load balances and limits can be inspected twice a year. And then again, have spare parts on hand. So spray nozzles, belts, motor, fill media, a float switch, excuse me, a float valve, etc. Uh, change the water every six months. Again, depending on your specific situation and the condition of your water. You may have to change it more often, less often, etc. And then tighten mechanical connections. So look at your nuts, bolts, uh, pipe fittings, etc. Make sure nothing's loose, damaged, missing, broken, cracked, etc. I hope this information helps you. Please like, share, subscribe, leave me a comment, and thanks for watching.